In this video, we'll be talking about the range and values of trig functions. Press pause to copy these in your notes. When you're ready to continue, press play. All right, so the thing that you should notice about these is that sine and cosine, the values of those trig functions are between negative 1 and 1. Tangent and cotangent has values that can be any number at all. And then cosecant and secant have values that are less than negative 1 or greater than positive 1. So they can never be in the span between negative 1 and 1. So what is wrong with the problem that asks you to find secant theta if we know that cosine theta is 3 halves. Well, sine and cosine both have to be between negative 1 and 1. And 3 halves is equal to 1 and a half. So I would write that cosine theta is between negative 1 and 1. So that's why that's impossible. Right. Our next problems, we want to decide whether each statement is possible or impossible. The first one is cotangent theta equals negative 0.999. Well, cotangent and tangent both can be any value at all. So this statement is possible. Cotangent and tangent can be any value. Okay. Cosine theta equals negative 1.7. This one is similar to the previous example. Cosine and sine um, have to be between negative 1 and 1. And this uh, number is outside that interval, so uh, impossible. Cosine and sine are between negative 1 and 1. And then cosecant, cosine and sine are between negative 1 and 1. Then their reciprocals have to be outside of that interval. So this is impossible as well. And we would write uh, cosecant and secant are less than or equal to negative 1 or greater than or equal to positive 1. So this one was impossible. Our next problem uh, says that uh, theta is in quadrant 3 and the tangent of theta is 8 over 5. Find the values of the other five trig functions. So let's draw a sketch. Uh, theta is in quadrant 3, so 1, 2, 3. Our vector is in quadrant 3. Let's draw the reference triangle. Whenever you do that, this vertical side always goes to the x-axis. So uh, no matter what quadrant you're in, take from the point at the end of the vector, take your line segment to the x-axis. Right. And then we are told that the tangent is 8 over 5. Now tangent is defined as y over x. So our y value is 8 and our x value is 5. 
Now, this segment is left, so um, our x value is negative. And since this side uh, is going down, our y value is negative as well. So to find the values of the other five trig functions, I'm going to need my uh, length of my hypotenuse, or r. Um, I know that r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. And So my r value is going to be 25 plus 64. r is the square root of 89. So let's write down our trig functions. Sign theta, cosine theta, and tangent was given, so we don't need that one. Uh, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant theta, secant theta, and then cotangent theta. Well, cotangent theta is just the reciprocal of tangent, so I can write that immediately. That's 5 eighths. Sine is y over r, and we said r was the square root of 89. So we have a negative 8 over the square root of 89. When we rationalize that denominator, we get a negative 8 square root of 89 over 89. Our cosine is defined as x over r. So negative 5 over root 89. When we rationalize, that becomes negative 5 root 89 over 89. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So I just need to do the reciprocal of this ratio. So my cosecant is negative root 89 over 8. And my secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So just the reciprocal of this ratio. My secant then is negative root 89 over 5. So there's my five trig functions. And then another problem, find the cosine theta and the tangent theta, given that sine theta is a negative root 2 over 3, and cosine theta is positive. So let's draw a sketch. Cosine is positive in the two right-hand quadrants. And then my sine theta is negative here. So my reference triangle is going to be in quadrant 4. This cosine is positive on the right side, and then sine out of those two quadrants is negative down here. Now sine is defined as y over r. So my y value is a negative root 2, and my r value is 3. R is always positive, so I had to put the negative on the y value. Um, now we're looking for the cosine theta and tangent theta. Well, cosine theta requires uh, x value, and so does tangent. So I need to use Pythagorean theorem to um, get that. I can say that x squared plus negative root 2 squared equals 3 squared. So x squared plus, and then when you square a square root, you get just 2. 
and then 3 squared is 9. So x squared is 7, which makes x equal to plus or minus, but since I'm going to be uh, to the right, um, it's going to be a plus. So this is root 7. So my cosine is at x over r is root 7 over 3. And my tangent is y over x. So negative root 2 over root 7, which if we rationalize, multiply top and bottom, by root 7, we get negative root 14 over 7.